We continue now at the top of Daf Nun Tesam and Aleph and Maseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf 59a. On the previous summer, the Mishnah said that the Marzev, which is a small kind of gutter, there is no Chazaka for the Marzev, but for the Mazchila, which is the larger gutter that goes along the entire roof. So for that, there is a Chazaka. And the Gemara wanted to know what exactly does it mean that the Marzev does not have a Chazaka. And the Gemara in the previous summer offered three explanations, which we'll review in a moment. And so the Gemara now continues. Tanan, we learn in the Mishnah, HaMazchila Yesh it says the mazchila, again, which is the larger gutter that goes along the length of the entire roof, that the person can establish a chazaka, meaning to say he has a chazaka that once it's over there, it's established over there. So he has a chazaka in terms of the neighbor. The neighbor is not able to say you, you should remove it, etc. And so the Gemara now says, shapir. It's good according to the first two explanations we give on the previous summit of what it means that the marzev, there is no chazaka. We cannot understand what it means the mazchila, yesh la chazaka. Again, we'll see the Rashbam in a moment who will explain this. But according to the one who says that it means that if you want to build underneath it so he's allowed to build, meaning that's what the marzev ain lo chazaka means. According to the third explanation, it means that the marzev, there's no chazaka, the neighbors allowed to build underneath the marzev. So then the question is, my mina. So what's the problem? Why is it that he wouldn't be able to build underneath the maschila? Why is that bothering the owner of the maschila? Meaning to say, it doesn't make sense. If you're going to say, according to the third explanation of the Gemara, that the idea of marzev ain lo chazaka means that the neighbor is allowed to build underneath the marzev, so then it would mean maschila yesh lo chazaka means the neighbor is not allowed to build under the maschila because there's a contrast between marzev ain lo chazaka and Maschila Yesh Chazaka. Apparently, the person who owns the Maschila has a greater Chazaka. He's established himself more, and therefore the, the neighbor would not be able to build underneath the Maschila. But what would be the problem of building underneath? It doesn't ruin the Maschila as, at all. And the Gemara says, No, Hacha be Maschila shall, bili, shall binyan askin. And here we're talking about a Maschila. This, this gutter, this pipe, is shell binyan, which essentially means it's built out of stones. And so therefore, it actually could be damaging to build something underneath. The Yamarle, because he can say to him, Lo nichali de sisra ashisa. I don't want the wall. What's essentially going to happen is that when you're banging, in order to build something, that vibration is going to damage what's holding up the maschila, and so therefore he can have that claim. That's why by maschila specifically, it could be a problem. It establishes a chazaka, and you're not allowed to build. The neighbor is not allowed to build underneath. And the Rashbam explains, Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, HaMazchila Yesh Chazaka, the Maschila, there is a Chazaka, meaning, Uvemai Dukatani HaMarzev Ein Lo Chazaka Kamar. It's obviously a contrast with whatever Marzev Ein Lo Chazaka means. If Marzev is Ein Lo Chazaka in this sense, so Maschila is Yesh Chazaka in that same sense. Aval HaMazchila Yesh Chazaka, the Marzev doesn't get a Chazaka, the Maschila does, so we have to understand what it means according to the various explanations. And the, and the Rashbam continues, Bishlom Alaman Damar Hanachtar Shaper. Now we can make it work according to the first two explanations the Gemara gave on the previous summit of what it means Marzev Ein Lo Chazaka. And here the Rashbam explains the Shmuel that according to Shmuel, Shmuel's explanation of what it means Marzev Ein Lo Chazaka, the Yomar Ein Lo Chazaka Meiruach Achas Shapir. So he says it doesn't have a Chazaka from one side. What that means to say is, is let's say the Marzev is on like the north side of the house, so he can't say it must be on the north side of the house, meaning the person who owns the Marzev can't say that, I, that he's not going to move it at all. No, it's not true. He may have to move it. He may have to move it to the south side. He does have a chazaka that he could put it in one of the two sides, but he can't say that it's always going to be at that side. So that's how Shmuel understood Ein lo chazaka. He can't say that it's always allowed to be at this particular side. So it's Rech So then it would make sense because then we could say the contrast. Avol hamaschila yesh lo chazaka. The maschila does get a chazaka. The dover kviyus with that's something that's much more permanent. Vein regilin lo akram imakam lo You don't just move that from one place to another. So you can say that has a total chazaka in its place. It doesn't have to be moved at all. So that we can. Explain according to Shmuel's understanding of Mar Zevein Lo Chazaka. V'chein de Rebbe Chanina, now Rebbe Chanina as well. Rebbe Chanina gave an, an, an explanation. Shem Haya Aruch Mekatsro. He said, "What does it mean, Mar Zevein Lo Chazaka? Let's say it's a little too long, so the neighbor's allowed to shorten it. So you can say, 'Aval Hamazchila Yesh Lo Chazaka.' You can say the Mazchila does have a Chazaka, meaning Ve'ein Mekatsro No So. The neighbor's not allowed to shorten it. So there we can give explanations. But the Rashbam continues, 'El Laman Tamar Gabe Mar Zev.' But according to the third explanation by Mar Zev, the one who says, 'De Lahachi Ein Lo Chazaka,' what does it 
doesn't mean that the Marziv has no chazaka, Shimratza Livnos Tachtov Bona means to say that the neighbor can build underneath. So Maishna Maschila to come and Yeshlo Chazaka, why should Maschila be any different that by Maschila suddenly the person does create a chazaka, Shein Bona Tachta? Now the neighbor is not allowed to build underneath it. My Nafka Le Mino, the Bal Maschila, what does the Bal Maschila care? Iboni Bal Chatzar too saw if the Bal Chatzar builds underneath. Hello Mavsid Midi, that's not making him lose anything just because he's building underneath of the gutter. Ubal Chatzar Lo Shibilo Chatzar Lo Maschila, so Ladover Shino Mazakla, you're not going to say that the owner of the Chatzar, the neighbor, is saying that he's giving over, so to speak, his rights to his own property for something that's not even creating any damage. I'm not allowed to build underneath your maschila, even though it doesn't harm you whatsoever. And the Gemara answered, we're talking over here about a maschila shel, bil- shel binyan, and the Rashbam says avonim. Shel binyan means that it's made out of stones. So there already the person who owns the maschila can say, it is damaging. I don't want you to build underneath my maschila of stones. The tisra ashisai, because that's going to ca- cause the wall, which is holding up the maschila, it's going to call it, cause it to weaken. That's what happens when it's a stone wall. Kilomar maschila shali tipol lakol makvos v'hagarzen v'chol kli barzel b'hibonos b'nyonecha. When you're building what you're building, so you're constantly banging, there's all kinds of vibrations, that's going to cause the wall of the maschila to fall down. Avol gabi marziv lo chashiv kol kach, but the marziv is not that important. Afilo have a binyan, even if it was made of stones, bon atachtav, you can build, bin, build underneath it. Inami or says the rashbam, haidu kamaflik bein marziv le maschila, the reason we're making a distinction in the Mishnah between marziv and maschila, haidu mishum, the stam marziv shalates, is because a marziv in general is usually made out of wood, ustam maschila shalavonim, and the maschila is usually made out of stone, so that might be the contrast, but the point is, again, we can understand it even according to this third explanation of what it means, marziv ein lo chazaka. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rav Yehuda says that Shmuel says, it's sinor hamakaleach mayim lechatzer chaver, let's say a person has a pipe, and the pipe is pouring water into the chatzer of his neighbor, uva bal hagag lesosmo, and now the owner of the roof, the owner of this sinor, he wants to seal up the pipe so that the water is no longer going to flow into the neighboring chatzer. Bal hachatzer ma'akev alav, the owner of the chatzer actually can stop him and say, you cannot seal up this pipe. Diyamarle, because you can say to him, ki echi da'at konis la chatzer didi lemishte beimaya, just like you have rights of my chatzer, that you're allowed to pour your water into my chatzer, you have those rights, I also have some rights. Ladidi nami koni li maya de igrach, I also have rights to the water coming from your roof, I've established a certain right to get this water, and therefore you can't just seal up the pipe without my permission. And the Gemara continues, Itmar was stated, a machlok asamuroim regarding this, Ravoshia amar ma'akev, Ravoshia says that he is able to stop him, meaning the neighbor can stop him from sealing up the pipe. Rabbi Chama amar eno ma'akev, Rabbi Chama, Rabbi Chama is the father of Ravoshia. He says, no, he can't stop him from sealing up the pipe. He has the right to seal it up. Azal shayla the Rabbi Bisa, then he went and he asked it to Rabbi Bisa. Rabbi Bisa is the grandfather of Ravoshia, the father of Rabbi Chama. Amar lu, he said to the ma'akev, he agreed with the grandson Ravoshia. He said, yes, he is able to stop him from sealing up that pipe. And the Gemara says about the, the Rabbi Oshio, Rabbi Cham and Rabbi Issa, who were again grandson, son, and the, and the grandfather, he said about them, Kari Oleh Rami Bar Chama, Rami Bar Chama called about them, V'hachut HaMeshulash, when you have a string which is intertwined the three times, you have three generations of scholars, Lobim Heira Yinotik, it's not quickly going to break. And who does that refer to? Is that Rabbi Oshio, Benosho Rabbi Chama, Benosho Rabbi Bisa. That refers to Rabbi Oshio, who was the son of Rabbi Chama, who was the son of Rabbi Bisa. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Sulam Ham Mitzri ain lo chazaka, the Egyptian ladder does not establish a chazaka. The idea is that it's small, so it doesn't establish such a chazaka. And the Gemara says, hey, chidom is sulam hamitzri. What exactly is a sulam hamitzri? Amri devei rabiyane, they said in the, the yeshiva rabiyane, kol she'en lo arbo chavok, and if it doesn't have four rungs, meaning to say it's that small, so then we say it's a sulam hamitzri, it's considered a small ladder that cannot establish a chazaka. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, chalon hamitzri ain lo chazaka v'chulu. It said that if you have an Egyptian window also, that's like a small window, it doesn't establish a chazak, and the Mishnah went on to explain what size, we're talking about a window which you can't fit your head through, and then the Gemara gave another, the Mishnah rather gave another explanation, Rabbi Yehuda's explanation, Chalon HaMitzris, he said that if it doesn't have a frame, that's what makes it that it does not establish a chazak, and so the Gemara now says, Maishna Gabe Sulam Delo Mefarish, what's the difference that by ladder, the Mishnah doesn't give any explanation what it means, the Sulam HaMitzri, Maishna Gabe Chalon, and what's the difference by window, the Mefarish, where the Mishnah does go on to explain what a Chalon HaMitzris is, and the Gemara answers to that, Mishum de Kaboy Ifluge Rabbi Yehuda Besefer. The reason why the Mishnah explains Chalon is because there's a dissenting opinion. There's an opinion of Rabbi Yehuda who says it, it means to say that it does not have a frame. And so, therefore, since there's a dissenting opinion, so the Mishnah goes on to explain and goes and explains what exactly a Chalon HaMitzris is. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, If it's below the, 
below four amos, it establishes a chazaka, the yachol limchos, and the neighbor is able to protest. But if the window is above four amos, there's no chazaka, the eno yachol limchos, and the neighbor is not able to protest. And the Rashbam explains, Zamar Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, amos, if it's below four amos, meaning mikarka habais, meaning it's within four amos of the ground of the house, katani masnis, and that's what the Mishnah says, the chalon suri yesh lo chazaka, that the chalon suri, again, the chalon suri, that's not the chalon mitzris, this is the chalon suri, the Tyrian window, which is the bigger window, so it has to be a low window to establish chazaka. Why does it have to be low? The kevan di katarti, because now you have two reasons already, shu gadol v'namach, it's a big window and it's low down, v'yechol nestakam limen v'chotzer, you can use that window to look into the neighboring chotzer, so yesh lo chazaka, so then already can establish a chazaka if the neighbor doesn't protest. Shalom haya zem mani he shouldn't have let him do it. Elevadai birishu soasa, rather if he's letting him do it, he must have permission. Vimbashachenu livnos, and if the neighbor wants to build, hadin lehisrachik, he's going to have to build and distance himself. Kedetanan, like we learned in the mission earlier, hachalonos melmalon, umilmaton, umichenegdan dalaramos, when it comes to building by these walls, you have to distance above, below, and opposite four amos, there has to be distance. Vimbashav echod mehen leftoach chalon suri, lamatomi dalaramos, let's say now one of them wants to have a chalon suri, the smaller kind, the chalon suri, again, that's the bigger kind of window, rather, below four amos, mikarka habayis, meaning within four amos of the ground, shecheno yachol limchos biyado. Because of the fact that this is something which he's supposed to protest, he's able to protest. He's able to stop him from opening it. Meaning to say, essentially, Rabbi Zeir is saying is, when the Mishnah says, chalon suri yesh lo chazaka, it means if you have a big window, and also that big window is within four amos of the ground, you have both of those factors, that's when we say there's a chazaka, because of the fact that the neighbor should have protested if he didn't, he must have given permission, and that's also why, in that case, the protest would be effective. However, Lamalami Dalad Amos continues the Rashbam. Let's say that window is above four Amos from the ground, Mikarka Habayis from the ground of the house, Ain Lo Chazaka. So then there is no Chazaka. Dein Chavero Makbid, because the, the, the neighbor doesn't care so much. So therefore, when he's building it like this, so he's not able to stop him. Let's say the neighbor is building something nearby this window, he can't stop him from building. He can't say you have to distance what you're building from my window. That it shouldn't make it dark for me. Because he could say to him, You have to close it up. You haven't established a chazaka for this window. Let's say there's no window there. And he decides he wants to make a window there. And he wants to make it above four amos. He's not even, a, he's not even able. The neighbor's not even able to protest and stop him. Now the Rashbam says that this whole entire gemara Mori here is talking specifically about Chalon Tsuri. Aval Chalon HaMitzri, but the smaller kind of window, the Egyptian window, Bein Melmala Midal Ramos, Bein Melmata, doesn't matter if it's high or low, Ein Lo Chazaka, there's no Chazaka, Vagam Ein Yochel HaShach in Limchos, and also the neighbor cannot protest because that's just a small window. That's the way the Rashbam understands this Gemara, that it's talking specifically about Chalon Tsuri. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Lo, Amar Na Rabbi Lo says, Afilu Lamala Me'ar Ramos, even if this big window is above a four Ramos from the ground, Ein Lo Chazaka, he agrees that. There's no chazaka in that case. However, However, Rabbi Law says that the neighbor is able to protest. If somebody's building such a window, the neighbor can say, I don't want you to build that window. He's able to protest. And the Rashbam explains, Rabbi Law, Even if it's high up, more than four amos above the ground, even though he can't establish a chazaka, but the neighbor is able to protest and say, I don't want you to make a window over there. Like we're going to explain later on, Sometimes what's going to happen is you're going to place a bench over there and then you'll be able to see into my house. It will be a kind of a hezek re'iyah. You'll be able to invade my privacy. He's not concerned with this. A person's not going to have so much chutzpah to do this and so therefore there's no reason to allow the neighbor to be able to protest. That's the machlokis, Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Lo, whether the neighbor is able to protest this kind of a window. And the Gemara continues, Let's say that they are arguing, meaning Rabbi Zeir and Rabbi Law, they're arguing whether or not the neighbor can protest about this kind of window. Maybe they're arguing on whether we can force in terms of the Midas Stom. What that means to say is right now the Gemara is assuming that there's no damage whatsoever to the neighbor from a window that, th- that is this high up. And therefore in a situation where there's no damage whatsoever, so Rabbi Zeir says if there's no damage, you're not allowed to protest. Whereas the other opinion, Rabbi Law will say, no, he's able to protest even though that's a Midas Stom. 
Shalom. Even though he's protesting something that is no damage to him, it doesn't hurt him whatsoever, he's acting in an improper fashion by protesting, but according to Rabbi Law, Ein kofen al midastom, we can't force a person, if a person wants to act improperly, he is allowed to, let us suggest that that is the machlokas between Rabbi Zeira and Rabbi Law. Demar Savar Kofen, that Rabbi Zeira holds, we can force, we can say you're not allowed to act like the ways of Sodom. Umar Savar Ein Kofen, however, Rabbi Law says we can't force, if the person wants to protest, even though it's not hurting him at all, he is allowed to protest. And the Gemara says, Lo, no, the Kuli Alma Kofen, everybody agrees you could force, if there was no damage whatsoever, you can force him and say, sorry, you're not allowed to protest, nothing is hurting you over here by this window. However, Vishani Hacha, but it's different over here, the Yomar Lake, because he can say to him, meaning the neighbor can say to the person who's trying to make this window, that there actually is some kind of damage. Zimnin Demosvas Shashifa Tusach Vekaimis Vekachazis, sometimes you're going to put a bench underneath you, and then you're going to be able to see, you'll be able to look in, so there is a potential damage that I want to stop. And the Rashbam explains, Mida Stom, the way they behaved in Stom, how did they behave in Stom? Ein Mahan Al Chavero, Afa Bishain Chaser Bekach Klum, meaning they wouldn't help, a person wouldn't help his neighbor, even though he wasn't losing out at all. But Rabbi Zeir Kofen, according to Rabbi Zeir, we force a person not to act like that. The Lamalami Dalit, if a person's going to put a window above four Amos, he can't even see out that window. Ein Manichan Oso Limcho, so we're not going to say that the other person's allowed to protest. Sharei No Chaser Klum, the neighbor's not losing anything. You can't see out such a window into the neighbor's property. But according to Rabbi Law, we don't force, meaning to say if the neighbor wants, he can protest. And then the Gemara said, it's not true. Really, everybody agrees. But there is a potential damage over here. It's different over here. And there is a loss for the neighbor. Because sometimes the person in the house, he can put a bench over there. So he can be very high up and he can look through the window downward into the neighboring chutzr. So there is a potential damage. And therefore, the neighbor is allowed to protest that he shouldn't be allowed to build that window. And the Gemara continues, There was a person that came before Rabbi Ami with this exact case. He wanted to build such a window, and the neighbor was protesting. He sent him before Rabbi Abba Bar Memel. Amar Lay said to him, Ovid Lay, Ki Rabbi Law, you should rule in this case like Rabbi Law, meaning to say the neighbor is in fact allowed to protest the construction of this window. And the Gemara continues, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Let's say the person builds the window for the purpose of light, even the smallest kind of window, there is a chazaka in such a case. And the Rashbam explains, Person wanted to build a big window higher than four Amos. The neighbor was protesting. He said, you can rule like Rabbi Law. So we see that that is the halacha. And the Rashbam continues, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel says, Uli or if the window is made for light, Afilu kol shu yesh lo chazaka, even a small window can establish a chazaka. Chalon ha'asli likanis men or b'makom eifel, let's say it's a place that's dark, and you made the window for the purposes of light. Lo ba'inan chalon suri, there doesn't need to be a large window, a chalon suri. El afilu kol shu, even if it's a small window, yesh lo chazaka can establish a chazaka. The chalon ha'asli lo ora, because when a person makes a window for light, milsa de kviyu, so that's considered permanent. A person always needs light. If he made such a window, he made it forever. And it was the responsibility of the person who owned the neighboring chatzar to protest within three years. And from the fact that he didn't protest, we can say that he must have done it with his permission. And the Rashban points out, our, our Mishnah is not talking about a window that's made for light purposes. Alone. The purpose of the window in our Mishnah is in order to watch over the gardens or the orchards through the window. And so therefore, that's why in our Mishnah it makes a difference how big the window is, where exactly the window is. But if it's a window that's made for light purposes, again, that can establish a chazaka. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah Haziz. Let's say you have some kind of projection like a peg, something like that, that is sticking out of the wall of a person's house and it's overhanging the neighboring chutzr. Ad tefach, if it sticks out a tefach, yesh lo chazaka, so then it's able to establish a chazaka. And the Rashbam explains, Haziz Atefach Yeshlo Chazaka, Mishi Yeshlo Kosel Samach Lachatzer Chavero. A person has a wall near the courtyard of his friend, Vahotzi Ziz, and then he has a Ziz, he has some kind of projection that is coming out of the wall, Tefach Bolin Mikoslo Lachatzer Chavero, sticking out a Tefach into the property, into the courtyard of his friend, Havi Chazaka, that does establish a Chazaka. Vein Bala Chatzer Yochel Livnos Shambinian, and therefore what that means is, is that the owner of the Chatzer is not able to build something there, Listoris Haziz, which is then going to destroy the Ziz. Because the neighbor, the owner of the chutzr, would not have allowed Aziz to protrude so much a tefach into his chutzr if he had not given permission.
permission, because he is able to protest the fact that he didn't, so that allows the Chazaka to be established, as the mission will go on and say, from the fact that he didn't protest within within three years, we can say that he did this with permission, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video, on Daphne Nuntes, Amid Beis.